Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, this is Dr. Yusuf. Uh, I'll be showing you my preferred technique for doing cataract surgery in uh, 2016. I started to use the, a lot of the extended range lenses, which which is very successful. And patients are happy with it. I started using the dropless cataract surgery uh, so that the patient doesn't need to put drops after surgery. And I started to do uh, femto-assisted uh, cataract surgery. Uh, so I'll go through a routine case uh, and I'll explain as I go. So we'll start using the fixation ring. This is a 2.75 knife and 2 millimeter deep incision. Here you have to be very careful with the construction of the wounds because the wounds have to be self-sealing uh, as we are doing dropless. I, I switched from putting the medications in the infusion into injecting it ahead of time at the beginning of the surgery. We use 1% uh, uh, xylocaine with uh, phenyl efferent for dilation and freezing. And uh, this is the viscoelastic endocode from AMO, uh, which is a dispersive viscoelastic. I frequently put uh, some of that on the surface of the eye to maintain uh, the clarity and uh, avoid dryness through the surgery. I use the 5.5 millimeters uh, marker ring on the cornea to give me a 5 millimeter. Uh, capsule rex is inside, which is very important to cover the uh, the optic of the lens and avoid uh, or decrease the chance of uh, posterior capsule pacification. Uh, still doing the capsule rex the same way we did before, uh, but being careful about centration. A lot of these premium lenses are very uh, uh, very critical about the centration of the lens, so it's very important. Do the hydrosection, hydro delineation. And uh, this is the endocode. I'm putting a layer on the cornea to avoid dryness throughout the surgery. Uh, I'm using the, the uh, ammo white star uh, and this is the chopping technique. I'll speed through this uh, a little bit so that it doesn't become boring. This was a plus four cataract nuclear. It's very important doing this uh, step is to to avoid uh, uh, opening the capsule for sure. I use the J. County of cortical cleanup. There's the disposable ones and there's the reusable ones. And I've been using this for years on the 10cc syringe, BSS. I try to leave an open where, where this here uh, in the uh, cortical material so that you can go in between the capsule and the cortical material and you can you see that everything is washed out. You polish the capsule with this. Uh, uh, inject in BSS and, and everything comes out of the wound and it, it leaves you a very nice posterior capsule clear with a low risk of having uh, complications. So I'm injecting the uh, heel on this stage from AMO which is a cohesive viscoelastic. I use a chopper to fixate the eye at this stage, and this is the injector for the Symphony lens, which is an extended range lens. Give you a great distance vision, intermediate vision, and reasonable close-up vision. You have to hold the stuff a little bit further away. Uh, it's more like an intermediate uh, kind of uh, vision lens, so it, it shows you more of the intermediate like computer distance, or iPhone, iPad, these kind of distances. For a very small fine print, uh, you might still need uh, low power reading glasses over the counter ones. And it's very tolerant to astigmatism too, if you have the low degree of astigmatism, it does, it's not affected too much by, uh, by that lens. Contrary to the uh, original multifocals, which uh, will be actually very critical of astigmatism. So this one with low degree of astigmatism can still implant it without correcting astigmatism. Now we're going to the dropless part. I use, have been using the moxifloxacin for years, since 20, uh, 2003. And in this uh, way, we are using a diluted 150 microgram per ml uh, of, uh, of moxifloxacin. 100, 150 microgram per 0.1 ml. Um, we put it everywhere. So I hydrate the wounds with it, like this step. So it's very well sealed. The, the whitish coloration will go away soon after. 
So I hydrate the main wound, the paracentesis. Inject into the capsule, into the sulcus, and behind the lens. So every, uh, moxifloxacin moxifloxus in everywhere. It's a super dose to kill any bugs that went through during the surgery. And uh, this is the long acting form, which is a triumcin alone with uh, fourth generation queen alone, moxifloxacin from Empremis, and that would stay for there for, for a few weeks. So that this this way the patient doesn't need to use uh, uh, medicated drops. They still need to use uh, uh, artificial tears if the eyes get dry. So this is the location of the uh, the droplets. So the moxifloxacin is clear one I injected intra uh, intraocular, and the other one the the turbed one uh, you use it uh, subconsc. So the patient doesn't need to use all these drops, and the patients are happy. For the extended range lenses. Uh, the, uh, it works really great. It's much better than the older multifocal lenses. They are not the same. They're completely different technology. And I'll let you listen to this one. IOLs today not only replace the cataractor's lens, but also correct refractive errors of the eye. Monofocal lenses enable patients to see clearly at distance. Patients may select a presbyopia correcting multifocal lens in order to achieve near vision in addition to distance vision. With multifocal IOLs, each focal point is designed for objects at a certain distance. With multiple focal points, one image is in focus at a time. Now, with the introduction of Technis Symphony Extended Range of Vision IOL, a new category of presbyopia correcting IOLs is available for patients. Technis Symphony IOL is the first and only presbyopia correcting IOL that provides an extended depth of focus, which results in an extended range of continuous high quality vision with enhanced image contrast, as well as low levels of visual disturbances. Technis Symphony IOL delivers on this promise by utilizing two proprietary complementary enabling technologies, which are the Echelet design that extends the depth of focus and the achromatic technology which corrects chromatic aberration. Firstly, let us look at how the Echelet design works to extend the depth of focus. Diffractive lens technology and design is well understood in the field of optics, having a wide range of applications, from astronomy to nanotechnology. In ophthalmology, diffractive technology is generally associated with multifocal lenses. However, in the optics world it is widely known that diffractive technology can be employed to achieve a variety of outcomes, including depth of focus extension. As a matter of fact, light can be distributed in almost any desired way by modifying the Echelet design of the diffractive lens. The Echelet is the relief or profile of the lens, meaning its height and shape within each ring. The design of the Echelet determines how the light is transmitted through the lens. In multifocal IOLs, diffractive technology transmits the light in such a way that it converges at more than one focal point. Technis Symphony Diffractive Lens technology is optimized to transmit light over a range of distances. This is called constructive interference and results in an elongated focus. Because of its elongated focus, the Technis Symphony IOL delivers high quality vision through 1.5 diopters of defocus and an increase of one diopter range of vision throughout the defocus curve compared to a monofocal IOL. The plateau of the defocus curve demonstrates the extended range of vision of the Technis Symphony lens. In addition, because of the elongated focus, the Technis Symphony IOL does not have the distinct focal points of a multifocal IOL, and as such does not have the distinct out-of-focus images that can lead to halo and glare. As a result, the incidence of nighttime halos and glare is low. Now let us look at how the achromatic technology works to correct chromatic aberration. Visible light is composed of a range of wavelengths that are red at one extreme and blue at the other. 
The cornea of the natural eye is a refractive lens, which is more powerful for blue light than red. The eye can only be in focus for one wavelength at a time. As such, the remaining wavelengths of visible light, which are out of focus, cause blur and a reduction in contrast vision. This is called chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration can be reduced with a diffractive IOL because a diffractive lens is opposite to the cornea in that it is more powerful for red light and less powerful for blue. The effect is that the wavelengths of color meet at the same focal point, so that blur and aberrations are reduced. But a chromatic technology applies this principle to not only reduce chromatic aberration, but to correct the chromatic aberration of the natural eye. This is similar to examples in the photographic world where refractive and diffractive lenses are also combined to correct chromatic aberration. Correction of chromatic aberration results in a sharper focus of light and increased image contrast, which is especially important in low light conditions. The Technis Symphony IOL is the first and only presbyopia correcting IOL that provides an extended depth of focus, which results in an extended range of continuous high quality vision with enhanced image contrast, as well as low levels of visual disturbances. In addition, the Technis Symphony Toric extended range of vision lens provides all the benefits of Technis Symphony IOL technology for patients with astigmatism. For the femto-assisted cataract surgery, this is a nice additional option for the cataract. It passes through stages. The machine will first uh, do a 3D uh, image of the eye and to guide the laser for this next later step. So the machine will scan the cornea, front and back, and the capsule, the lens, the nucleus, and, and pupil, and will center and precisely do cuts to the eye that we actually planned through the computer. So it's an amazing additional uh, thing for the cataract surgery. Results-wise, it's uh, it's equivalent to the manual. So this is the machine we're using Catalyst for that for AMO. So it goes through Capsorexis first, which opens the the uh, the five point four point nine actually, and then the nucleus softening softening. You can have any pattern you want, so you can cut. Uh, four quadrants, six quadrants, and that's why I do the uh, six quadrants. And it's, it's, it cuts a little cube, so it's much easier to remove. And after that, it will do uh, the awkward incisions, correct astigmatism, and then it will open the incisions uh, for uh, for the surgery itself. It's a nice a nice additional thing to the cataract surgery we're already doing. Results-wise, it's it's more precise. That's that's it, but not. Uh, super, super better. Thank you very much for watching.